the Haramein from the control of the Khalifa in Istanbul, but you have to put it in the control of those who will not themselves claim the Khilafa and will not allow anyone else to claim the Khilafa. And so long as these people keep control of the Haramein and the Hajj, the Khilafa can never be restored. Simple, isn't it? Simple, isn't it? And so that is why they had to make the trip to Riyadh to meet. What's his name? Abdul Aziz Ibn Saud. Correct name? Of course it's the correct name. Why are you afraid to mention it? <laughs> but Ablaziz ibn Saw did not control the Hijaz. So he couldn't command the check for seven million pounds. Huh? He had to be content with something less than that. So what the British offered to him was if you would sign the same kind of agreement with us, and violate the specific command in the Quran and betray Allah and His Messenger and betray the Ummah. If you will do that, we pay you five thousand pounds a month. Would you accept that? Abdul Aziz says yes, yes. And in 1916, Abdul Aziz ibn Saud signed an agreement with Britain. Yes which made of him a military ally of Britain, subservient to Britain. But when the Ikhwan, who were his military force, questioned him, how can you sign this agreement with Britain? And how can you accept this money from Britain, 5,000 pounds a month? Abdul Aziz in his house says, this is jizya. Jizya is what they pay to me because I control them. <laughs> it was dust in their eyes and they swallowed it. And so Abdul Aziz Ibn Saud got away with it. Massive betrayal and a very dangerous plan is now in place. As soon as the Khilafah is destroyed, that Abdul Aziz ibn Saud will be given what is known as the green light, something that Saddam Hussein knows about, the green light. And then he will attack and take control of the Haramain. And when once he does that, he won't make the mistake of ever claiming the Khilafah for himself. And he will never allow anyone else <laughs> to claim the Khilafah. Because no one else can take the control of the Hijaz and the Haramain from them because they are supported by Britain. And so goodbye to the Khilafah. It's gone. It can never be restored. Never, never, never be restored. So long as Britain and the United States of America underwrite the security of the Saudi state, you can never, never, never restore the Khilafah. By 1919, the Ottoman Empire was in shambles, falling apart. And a British army under General Allenby, with many Arabs and Punjabi Muslims fighting faithfully under his control, attacked the Turkish garrison which was defending Jerusalem, defeated it and liberated the Holy Land. This was a joyous day for the Jews because now the countdown is really moving forward and the Golden Age is coming back. In the same 1919, when the Ottoman Empire is collapsing, and it is losing all its non-Turkish possessions, all the Arab parts of the Ottoman Empire are falling away. The Greek army now invades the Turkish mainland, Anatolia. 
And the Turkish people now have a tremendous fright in their hearts because the Greeks hate them with a PhD in hatred. So Britain now has to create a Turkish general who would appear to the Turkish people as a savior who has come down from the heavens with his hands resting on the wings of angels to save the Turkish people. And so at a place called Gallipoli, a man named Mustafa Kemal inflicts a defeat on the ruling state in the world, Britain, and immediately climbs the ladder to become the hero of all heroes in Turkish history. Very convenient, isn't it? Mustafa Kemal now takes over. He is in fact de facto, de facto ruler over the Ottoman Empire. And the Khalifa is just a piece of furniture. In 1920, I think, or 21, there was a big treaty, uh, negotiations in Versailles. And from this emerge now the Turkish Republic, which replaces the Ottoman Islamic State. But Mustafa Kemal said, the Turkish people love the Khalifa. So if Europe could have a Pope, why can't we have a Pope too? This was simplistic thinking on the part of Mustafa Kemal. If the Europeans could have a Pope, well, so too can we. So the new Turkish government of Mustafa Kemal decided to take the Khilafa and remove from it all political authority and make the Khalifa the equivalent of the Pope. This was 1922. And things were going fine for him. Turkish people were happy. Khilafa is still there. And the leadership of the revolution in Turkey were very happy because we have a secular state now, a model after the European state. But in 1924, on the 3rd of March, suddenly Britain demanded, of course, this is a secret, they wouldn't reveal it. Britain demanded of, Ottoman, of, of Mustafa Kemal that he must abolish the Khilafah. The demand came from Britain. And on the 3rd of March 1924, the Turkish Republic abolished the Khilafah. The question we have to ask is, why did they do it when there was no need to do it? Nothing. It, it represented no threat whatsoever to the secular Turkish Republic. The answer for the abolition of the Khilafah on the 3rd of March 1924 is located in a place called India. But even the Indian scholars of Islam are not aware of it. <laughs> even they are not aware of it. When the attack on the Khilafah was taking place in the 1916, 17, 18 period, then Indian ulama, at that time the Indian Muslim community was one of the most influential Muslim communities in the world. And the Indian Muslim community was led by leaders who knew Islam and lived Islam. Hmm? Men like Maulana Muhammad Ali Jauhar, Maulana Shaukat Ali, Maulana Sayyid Suleiman Nadwi, Mufti Kifayatullah, men who knew Islam and lived Islam. And they wanted to get rid of British imperial rule in, Britain, in, in India. So that when they got rid of the British, they could restore Islamic rule over Muslims. That's all they wanted. Get rid of the British and restore Islamic rule over Muslims. And they realized that they could mobilize the Muslim masses of India over this issue of the Khilafah because everybody loved the Khilafah. And so they establish a movement which they call the Khilafat Movement, Haratul Khilafah, Harakatul Khilafah, the Khilafat Movement. 
When they established the Khilafat movement and it began to mobilize the Muslim masses, the body which was sleeping is now waking up for revolutionary struggle to preserve the Khilafah in Istanbul. The leader of the Hindus realized, but wait a minute, the Muslim